how many players are struggling when trying to find the legendary pairings that suit them the most. It's very frequent that we grab advice from here and there, but we are not considering that there are many other factors involved in the process other than the commanders themselves, which are, among the others, how long have you been playing the game and how much have you invested in your commanders already? I will try to answer the most asked questions about infantry investments and pairings and I count to do more videos for cavalry and archers as well. So slap a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and stick around if you are looking to improve your account. Hello everyone, Wig Gaming Gear and today an entire video dedicated to the best infantry investments for Rise of Kingdoms. Let's start with criteria. We have had four different generations of infantry commanders, starting with the first with Charles Martel and Richard I, available in the Mightiest Governor event and in the Wheel of Fortune respectively, and in the very early kingdoms to be honest, Richard was available in the gold chest as well, but this was removed later on. And you can get those commanders two months after the beginning of your kingdom, so pretty early on. For the second generation we have Constantine and Alexander the Great. Same here, MGE and Wheel of Fortune respectively, available about seven months into your kingdom. The third generation include Leonidas and Guan Yu available when your kingdom reaches an age of 13 months approximately. Then we have the fourth and final generation until now, with Zenobia and Harald Sigurdsson, available in about 21 months into the game. So we have a total of 8 legendary commanders dedicated to the infantry unit. But before diving into the analysis of the commanders, you might want to know which civilization grants you a special unit. Let's briefly remember that you unlock the special unit when you reach the tier 4 technology. And Rome, France and Japan will grant you an infantry special unit. Which one to choose? Well, if there is something lacking in the infantry is for sure the march speed. And if there is an extremely positive aspect about the infantry is how sturdy they are and how well they can take hits. So overall strong and slow. For those reasons, Rome is for sure the civilization to pick, because it grants you a boost in defense, which the legendary Rome's special units is very strong with. And also a solid 5% boost in march speed, which is always good, trust me. So if you love infantry, just pick Rome, you will make no wrong choice. On to the commanders. Let's analyze the scenario in which you have all the commanders available. So which one to pick first? For sure, Guan Yu. Guan Yu. Go with him 100%. For me, he is battle ready from 5151, but that's very difficult to obtain, because you cannot max every other skill. The best case scenario would be 5155, so just max the first skill out, which you should always do, except maybe the legendary gathering commanders, of which we don't give a shit, as always. And from 5111, the more sculptures you invest into him, the better it will ever be. My suggestion is absolutely to max Guan Yu. For me, he's the best infantry commander. It's one of the few commanders that I will ever suggest to max. It's really worth it. And I cannot emphasize this enough. If you wish me to do a guide exclusively on this commander and analyze him a bit more, please let me know in the comment section down below. I think that by now I've said this plenty of times, but I will repeat it again. Leonidas is the best pairing for Guan, and you can invest in him just 190 sculptures, bringing him to 5511 and pair him with Guan. Very, very solid. Another excellent second for Guan is Alex the Great, which in my opinion you should bring to 5551. Same thing for Harald. 5551 and you're good to go. In general, for a second to one, the priority I suggest is the one shown on the screen. As you will unlock Leonidas approximately 
at the same time with one, you could invest in different commanders to begin with and then you can go with them, together. But as many players will invest in Alex because he's available earlier into the game and is also very versatile in other pairings as we will see, you have the time to max Alex and then invest in Guan, that's another option. Let's move on to another of the must-have infantry commanders in the game, Constantine. He's very sturdy, he excels in garrisoning structures and is extremely useful in group battles. So useful that it's extremely difficult to gain a top spot in the Sunset Canyon or Lost Canyon without him. Every murder ball should have some Constantines here and there. By the way, if you want to know how to pick and choose your murder ball, please click the card up on the top. You can have Constantine at 5511, so perfectly functional with an investment of only 190 sculptures and pair him with Charles Martel. So if you are an active player, you will not even need to invest in Charles Martel because you can find his sculptures in the gold chests. After 7 months, the time you will unlock Constantine, you will for sure have Charles at 5511 or very close to it. So make sure to unlock only the first two skill of these commanders at the beginning and skill him up to be functional. Constantine and Charles may very well garrison structures. Another two excellent commanders that go along well with Constantine in a supporter role are Mulan and Joan of Arc. No problem for Joan, she's an epic, so in a few months or even a few weeks into the game you will have her maxed out. For Mulan, same speech as for Charles. You will find her in the gold chest, so please don't waste sculptures on her. Then we have Alexander the Great, who is probably the first infantry commander most of the players invest in. Because as I said, he's part of the second generation of infantry, so available fairly soon. Alexander is for me one of the most versatile commanders in the game. You can have him at 5551 and pair him with an archer commander like YSG, which should be always maxed in my opinion, and you can use them with infantry and the result will be excellent. You can pair Alex with Harald Sigurdsson at 5551 and have a pretty good result. And you can even pair Alex with Richard I, which is a very solid choice for the field battles, especially in the very first KVK. I've seen personally players have excellent results with Alex Richard or the opposite Richard Alex, even in KVK 4. And you can have Richard at 5111, so with a little investment of 50 sculptures, you can have a very functional commander. You have probably noticed that in this slide there is one infantry commander missing, which is Zenobia. Well, Zenobia is an entire chapter on her own because she's a freaking beast for garrisoning. But as I always suggest, unless you are a very, very big player and you are spending money into the game, which I always advise to do with measure and ponderation, you should avoid to garrison. Because garrisoning structures affect many other players at once other than you. So you want to secure the garrison leader position to a player who has the commanders maxed, the right equipment, the VIP level available, etc. And as it is a niche role, you may want to go with your field commanders first and foremost, because you don't want to be in a position where you take a rally. You should never take a rally unless you know exactly that you are in a position to be able to take a rally, in which case you could well defend yourself with a Charles Martel and YSG. After you have everything else ready, you can think about stepping up your garrison game. But anyway, Zenobia comes almost two years into the game, so it's not something you should worry about early on, and you will have other solution anyway by then. I hope those information will be helpful to you, and please let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree with my suggestions, or if you have anything more to add, and if you want me to discuss further on some commanders that you are particularly interested in. These type of videos require a lot of effort in data gathering, graphics, editing, so a like and a subscription to the channel will be highly appreciated. As always, 
I will see you on the next one. Ciao.